In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I wonder if you've ever asked yourself a simple question. Who am I? Who am I? If you meet someone for the first time, there's an easy answer to that question, of course. You might tell them what you do or what you did. That's one answer, isn't it? You know, my job. I'm what I do. And this isn't necessarily just about work. It's about achievement. You can look at the photos in an album or on Instagram or Facebook and say, this is what I've done. This is who I am. Here's a picture of me on holiday. Here's a picture of our wedding. Here's a picture of our children. And this is satisfying. And it's good to be with the children at Christmas. But what if the only constant in life is change? What if someone outperforms me at work, gets the promotion I thought I deserved? Or what if a relationship comes to an end? What about when the children leave home one day and they're not around anymore? And then answering that question, who am I? By saying what I used to do, what I used to be, may feel a lot less satisfying. But there's another answer to the question, who am I? And it's by thinking, I am what others say about me. I am what others say about me. Which is great, of course, if everything's going well, at work or at home. But what if people stop saying nice things about you? Well, I mean, that hurts. Perhaps it could threaten our self-esteem, even our sense of who we really are. And there's a third way to answer that question, who am I? And it's to think, I am what I have. I am what I have. The materialism of our society makes this powerful claim. Look at my house. Look at the number of bedrooms. Look at my car. Look at my phone. Look at what I have. And that's what I have. And that's who I am. So respect me. Love me. But doesn't this way of thinking give hostages to fortune even more than the others? And doesn't it make the credit crunch, so-called, the recession, and the next energy bill a little bit more threatening? Now, it may be that all these answers are fine. We've never thought about how to answer the question, who am I? Because we've never needed to. But I think there are moments in life when, as our Lord says, a storm comes, the rain descends, the floods come, the winds blow, and we find out if the house of our life is built upon rock or sand. And that's when it might be useful to remember that there's another way of answering that question, who am I? Might be something to remember if life ever gets a little bit more challenging. And it's the way Jesus answered that question, who am I? His baptism that we remember today in the River Jordan gives him the answer. Jesus knows that he is the beloved son of God in whom the Father is well pleased. In that identity, he can endure the hatred of the world, even death on the cross. But did you know, at the voice of the Father, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, speaks to you too. These words don't just reveal the identity of Jesus, they reveal your identity too. When you are united to Jesus in your own baptism, this is how God sees you. This is what he says about you. This is who you are. You are a beloved son or daughter of the Father. Whatever happens to you, whatever you do or stop doing, whatever people say about you, whatever you have or don't have, this is who you are, beloved. My beloved son, my beloved daughter. In the words of a verse from the book Deuteronomy, sometimes read at funerals, the eternal God is thy refuge, underneath are the everlasting arms. We are his beloved children. So let us remember our baptism and live in this new year from our deepest and truest identity. Amen. <laughs>